Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the finite difference method and how to use this method to solve two dimensional heat conduction problems. As a part of the, your project, uh, you need to find the temperature distribution across the base of the heat sink. I hope you all have gone through the materials which are, have been uploaded into the Moodle site. Also, you might have done research using different websites. Heat transfer is actually a process which takes place because of temperature difference. But if you look at uh, temperature, it's actually a scalar quantity, whereas the heat transfer is actually a vector quantity. Whenever we are specifying the heat transfer, we need to tell the directions. If you look at that uh, diagram here, the temperature is specified as 50 degrees Celsius. The heat transfer is specified as 80 watts per meter squared. So the heat is actually going out. So there is a direction is there. So, so it's a vector quantity. Usually the sign convention is that for heat transfer, if it is going out of the system, it is negative. If it is coming into the system, it's positive. You know, driving force behind the heat transfer is always a temperature difference. This heat transfer can take place in three different modes, that is conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction mainly happens in solids. This is because of this mode of heat transfer is actually due to atomic vibration and free electrons. Now, look at the, this picture. What is actually the difference between transient and steady state heat transfer? If steady state heat transfer, all the temperatures at the boundaries remains constant. If you look at the first one, the left side temperature at 2 p.m. is 15 degrees Celsius. After three hours at 5 p.m., the temperature remains 15. So this is a steady state problem. Whereas the down one here at 2 p.m., the left side temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. Right side temperature is 7 degrees Celsius. But after three hours at 5 p.m., the left side temperature is, has changed to 12 degrees Celsius. So this is a transient problem which changes with the time. Now we will look at the multi-dimensional heat transfer. But always the heat transfer take places in all the three directions, X, Y, and Z. That's called three-dimensional heat transfer. But sometimes the heat transfer in one direction will be dominant. Other two directions will not be dominant. Then in that case, we will say this one dimensional heat transfer. If the heat transfer is dominant in two dimensions, we will say it is actually a two dimensional problem. Usually all systems, the heat transfer is a three dimensional process unless there is an insulation is there. But so it's solving three dimensional problems, it's very difficult. So we used to do some approximation to solve this kind of situations. A general assumption is you can treat it as a one dimensional problem. It won't be much accurate, but if you treat it as a two dimensional problem, it will be more accurate. But the problem will be much complicated. If you look at this wall here, on this side, the temperature is 80 degrees Celsius uh, as well as this side. Whereas other sides are 70 degrees Celsius, the other side is 65 degrees Celsius. So, so heat will flow in this direction as well as in this direction. So it is a two-dimensional heat transfer. So if it's a one-dimensional heat transfer, we know the Fourier law of heat conduction is the equation. Uh, Q is equal to minus K A dt by dx. Heat is conducted in the direction of decreasing temperature, thus the temperature gradient is negative when heat is conducted in x direction. Now, uh, look at a one-dimensional problem. This Fourier law of heat conduction can be used to solve one-dimensional problem. But in the case of two-dimensional problems, 
the solution is more complicated. This is actually the general heat conduction equation for a two dimensional problem. Uh, dou squared t over dou x squared plus dou squared t by dou y squared is equal to zero. So heat is flowing x direction, heat is flowing y direction. Each direction, how much is the heat flow we can find out using the Fourier equation in that particular direction. That is qx and qy. There are a few methods are there uh, to solve this kind of problem. What we are going to discuss is actually a numerical method called finite difference method. In this finite difference method, we are dividing the whole object into number of smaller units. By definition, FDM refers to a method of numerical solution of differential equation. The aim of this method to determine the temperature distribution through a rectangular body and by dividing it into nodes and solving the necessary equation in only two dimensions. This M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. TMN indicates its uh, temperature of node m row and nth column. Uh, similarly, all other notations. Here is actually the finite difference equation. This is node m n. This is actually internal. So the whole object is divided into so many nodes. You know, these interconnecting points are called nodes. So we need to generate equation for each node as a part of this procedure. This is actually the node MN. On the left hand side, the node we will say the node M minus one N. Whereas the right hand side node we will call the node M plus one N. Similarly, there is changes are there, the node at the top as well as bottom. We can see the equation while well, the delta x and delta y that's actually the horizontal distance between two nodes and vertical distance between two nodes respectively are equal. The equation for node is actually like this. So node the temperature at this node will be equal to the sum of these four nodes one at the top, one at the bottom, one at the left side, one at the right side. We need to add all these temperatures, then divide with the four, then you can get the temperature at this node. So this is a, an internal node. So you need to find the sum of all the four temperatures nearby and divide with the four. That is, will give you the temperature at this node. So similarly, we need to generate the equation for all these nodes in that um, uh, grid of that problem. And we need to solve these simultaneous equations. Let us look at what are the kind of boundary conditions. The boundary can be constant wall temperature. If the, at the boundary, the temperature is specified, we will say it's a constant wall temperature boundary. Sometimes the boundary will be exposed to convective uh, medium. For example, uh, air is there at the boundary and the air temperature is given, the wall temperature is not given. Then you, in that case, we will say it's a convective boundary. And we can classify the nodes as internal node. These nodes are within the solids. The just now what we have seen is the node M and is actually internal node. Sometimes the node will be exposed to a convective boundary. So in that case, we need to use a different equation. Or if it's actually a corner node, also we need to use a different equation. That is what is given here. This is the equation for a internal node. This is the equation for a convective boundary node. This is the equation for a convective corner node. In this case, there is a constant called a bi is nothing but bot number, which is equal to 
the heat transfer coefficient times delta x divided by k, where k is the conductivity. Now let us have a look at a question. This is a question where here uh, the temperatures at the four phases are mentioned. And the top phase is actually 500 degrees Celsius. All other three phases 100 degrees Celsius. We need to calculate the temperatures at these nodes using finite difference method. The procedure is here applying you know finite difference equation for each node we will be getting four equation for example if you look at the node number one if you take the node number one its temperature t1 will be equal to the temperature of this node which is 500 plus temperature of this node that is 100 temperature of this node that is t3 temperature of this node that is 2 to all divided by 4 so that is what is given here 100 plus 500 plus t2 plus t3 minus t4 t1 is equal to 0 we can bring this 4 t1 to the other side and you can find out the value of t1 these are the nodal equation for other nodes uh, node uh, 2 node 3 node 4 we got a set of simultaneous equations we need to solve then we can get answer as t1 is equal to t2 is equal to 250 degrees celsius t3 is equal to t4 is equal to 150 degrees celsius now i am going to show you how to solve this question using excel this is an excel uh, spreadsheet in this each node i am going to put as a cell each cell in excel is actually a node so node 1 is this one node 2 is this one node 3 is this one node 4 is this one so let me enter the boundary temperatures that's 500 at the top this side is also 500 whereas this here it is 100 here is 100 and uh, here it is again 100 here 100 and left side is again 100 now I am going to put some equations here uh, the nodal equation for the first node this is going to be the first node so that's equal to the sum of the right node plus the top node plus the left node plus the bottom node all divided by 4 at present it is coming as 0.40 now I need to copy this formula control C to all these cells now in some of you might be experiencing a problem with uh, this process you might be getting that uh, uh, there is a circular referencing is there so in order to, to solve that what you need to do you need to go to options and uh, formulas and click here enable iterative calculations if this is not ticked this solution is not possible So you can see the temperature values. This is what is how we are getting. Now we can uh, solve this question in large scale. If we want to get more accurate results, uh, we need to increase the number of nodes. For example, I am going to have 10 nodes like this way. I'm going to set the boundary conditions all first for example here or and in this direction also I am going to have many nodes and again
going to copy this one again this side also this is the grid now now I am going to use the same formula here that is sum of the all of the temperatures of surrounding nodes divided by 4 I am going to copy into all these things this is the one it has been done now we can plot the temperature distribution using this icon which is conditional formatting you can see the color scales you can say I set the second color scale for the temperature distribution using this method you can try the questions given in that sheet that's all for this time thank you